Hello guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm just going to quickly explain how the air conditioning system works on a vehicle. So on this car now we're looking at an outside temperature of approximately 30 degrees, so it's pretty hot, it's a hot day. Um, so we're now just going to take a look at the engine and where the compressor itself sits. So now the engine's just started up and you can see there's a belt there which drives um, the pulley on the compressor. So this is the actual air conditioning compressor. And we're just going to turn the aircon on. And then once the aircon is then turned on, you can then see that the pistons inside the compressor are pumping, which will then compress the gas which is inside the system. So at this particular point, you can see here that the we've got the, the gas is around about zero degrees C and you've got approximately three bar of pressure which is roughly just over 30 psi um, just bear in mind that we're, we are um, looking at a system where the outside temperature is 30 degrees um, generally if you were going to do any testing on a system you're probably going to find it's probably around about 21 to 25 degrees outside well if you're here in the UK anyway um, so just bear that in mind the, the the outside temperature does have a has a massive effect on on the actual pressures so um, once this compressed gas then um, is, is compressed by the the compressor itself uh, it then starts to exit the compressor and you can see now the gas has actually reached uh, approximately 85 degrees C and um, we've got around about 16 bar of pressure so it's extremely hot uh, gas and around about 16 bar of pressure there so roughly on, a, on a, as I said on a normal operating temperatures um, you're probably looking anywhere between on the high pressure side you should have 10 to 15 bar of pressure depending on what the outside temperature is again this is 30 degrees outside uh, so between 10 to 15 bar, that's, a, that, that's approximately 150 to about 210 psi. So once this gas now uh, leaves the compressor, it makes its way over to uh, the condenser, and it's also got um, a filter dryer there or a dryer which is built into the actual condenser itself. So as it kind of uh, enters the top of the condenser. We can see that the temperature is approximately still 85 degrees and around about uh, 16 bar in pressure. Now the temperature drops as it goes through this um, condenser, which is a bit like your uh, radiator. You can see that the temperature now drops right down to approximately 50 to 55 degrees. So we're still maintaining the same amount of pressure, but you, we can now see that we've actually turned our gas uh, back into a liquid. That's due to the actual temperature change. So that's the whole point of the condenser. As I said, it's a bit like a radiator. It's just re reducing the temperature to turn that gas back into a liquid. So uh, the, once this, this liquid then will flow through the actual dryer, and the dryer is there to stop any uh, gas continuing to continue through the system because we don't want, want any more gas to continue through the system. It needs to be in liquid form. So it goes up through to uh, the bulkhead where it meets the thermal expansion valve. So this thermal expansion valve is kind of the, um, the halfway point of the system. So between the expansion valve and the actual compressor itself, you've kind of got two halves of the system. So on this particular side which we've been looking at is, is what's known as the high pressure system. And on the other side then would be the low pressure system. Um, so we're running approximately 16 bar here in this example, but as I said, on the high pressure system, we should be running approximately 10 to 15 bar of pressure on average outside temperatures. And on the low pressure side, uh, you should be running between 1.6 to 2.2 bar, so it's 25 to 30 psi uh, on the low pressure side. So inside this thermal expansion valve is a very small hole. Um, which is adjusted by a, 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 a thermostat, like a wax thermostat effectively, uh, inside there. But all you need to know is there's a small hole in there and that changes the pressure from the high pressure side to the low pressure side. So at this particular point we can see we've got a liquid here, it's, under, it's at a high temperature. As this liquid 
is able to escape through the small hole, it then immediately turns um, into a gas because uh, effectively the uh, liquid is able to boil immediately. So this, this boiling drops the temperature um, of the actual um, uh, liquid itself, so it turns into, into a gas vapour. And this is where your cold, um, your cold air comes from. So you can see here, we're in a gas form. So we're, our pressure's dropped to approximately three uh, bar, and then the gas then passes through what's called the evaporator. Again, this looks similar to a radiator, like your coolant radiator, um, and the gas travels through here, and then your radiator, your uh, heater fan, will then blow the hot air from the outside over the evaporator, and which will then cool uh, the air down as it then enters into the cabin. So that um, cold gas travels its way back to the compressor where it starts the whole process over again. So the compressor will then um, compress that um, gas and turn that back into a high pressure and high temperature gas. Uh, it has to be a gas inside that compressor. We cannot compress a liquid. Um, otherwise it will just damage the compressor. So that compresses that back into a high pressure, high temperature gas, which then goes back through the um, condenser again to cool it down to back into a liquid and the system continues over. So that's pretty much it guys. That's how the air conditioning system works in a quick brief. I hope that's helped you out. If you have any questions, let me know. Just uh, drop a comment in the comments box. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Peace out.